Photoshop sometimes surprises me. Well, actually, it surprises me a lot. But sometimes I find features in it that I think, wow, I never realised that this feature could do this. Creates abstract designs, all kinds of infinite designs, very quick and easily. So, the tool. What am I doing to create something like this? Or literally anything. It's really amazing. So let's just remove this image. First thing to do, just go over here and create a layer. I like to put these designs on a layer. So just go here to the plus in the layers panel and you've got a layer. Then go to filter and then down here to render and picture frame. Just seems odd, picture frame. Okay, let's just go for picture frame. And now in picture frame, you've got this. Basically the default though, if you go here, 46, just select that and you've got different settings, you'll probably find you've got what you think is more a standard picture frame. Let's just go for one of these ones, something like that. However, you'll notice if you go up to like 46, I'm using the frame 46, there's a lot of frames to use and try out. So it's one of those tools you could spend forever exploring. But what you need to do here is go over here, set the margin, just change it, just vary it. You can see even by changing the margin, you can create some very abstract imagery with your frames. Then you go over here and you can change the size. And you can see straight away, 57, 78, and I'm just gonna set it to 100. That's what I'm gonna use. Unfortunately, it doesn't extend beyond that. Lots of Photoshop panels suffer from that. Infinity Photo, much better. Basically, you can have a slider up to 100, but the tool goes up to 600 or 1,000, and you can really create abstract designs all over the place. You've also got this arrangement. Does seem a bit odd. Unfortunately, it does seem sometimes when you go back into it, you can't always reproduce exactly what you think you're going to get from 173. It doesn't always seem to end up with much the same result. So you can just say 177. And you can see then as you change that, 189, another abstract design. You can also change the colour. You might decide, you know what, I don't want this colourful blue gradient, fine colour. I can just go over here and I maybe go for, say, a red. So close that. Take a few seconds to process it. Get this preview. Now, what you can then do is you can go here to advanced and you've got number of lines. Now, you can reduce number of lines down. So you go for that and you get something like that, which is pretty unusual design itself. You can make it more a smooth design by just reducing that down. But say you push it up to 30, let's just go for the max. Also, you can change the angle. And even that has a quite an interesting effect. Say, like, reduce it down to 72. Get something like that. So you might want a, like a border design or frame design around the edge, which you can slot all the way around. But you can push it up, say, to 325. Then click Invert. And you can see you get that. So let's just turn that off. And then... Once you've done that, click OK. It does take a few seconds to process. Obviously, it's a fairly large file, and you get something like that. And, of course, you can then manipulate this design. Of course, it's on a layer. That's the reason why I created it on a layer. When you put it on a layer, it means you can then move it around, reposition it. You can decide, you know what? I want this to be used as maybe a pattern design. So just go over here, go to Layers, deselect that. Then go make a selection, maybe select, say, inside. I don't want the whole thing. Maybe I'll just go for that. It's a great design for a pattern. So edit and then define pattern. Store it away and then you can use that pattern. Now, it's obviously not going to be a seamless design, but you can use it in countless ways with random fills and much, much more. So let's just undo that. So let's just undo. And now, and of course, you could maybe apply it three or four times, build up multiple layers of different designs. Just combine them all as well. So I've got this layer again. Again, let's go into Filter, go down here to Render, and go down to Picture Frame. In Picture Frame, again, it takes a few seconds to process. You get that. Sometimes it does seem to change. I don't know why. Sometimes when this arrangement just seems to, and it's very subtle changes sometimes, just to change 162, you get quite a randomly different looking design. And again, you can change the margin, push that up, and you can get that. It crunches it in even more, so it becomes more like a square-like design there, where the frame is really crunched in. And again, you can change the colour, or again, just click OK. 
And once you've done that, it takes a few seconds again to process. You can see it's just processing it, and you get that. And of course, you can manipulate it with more filters. Maybe filter, go down to distort, wave, etc. Again, it's on a layer. You could duplicate that layer as well. That's another thing. So layer, and then duplicate that layer. Click OK, and then just resize that. And you can see by that, you can combine it, maybe rotate it as well to create kind of abstract design like that. You don't have to just stick with the standard design. Let's try something else as well. Let's just remove that one again. So let's just go back. Got that layer, so filter. Go down here, again, render, picture frame. Let's just try it with another one. Now there's a lot. You can see there's loads and loads of one. There's bush, there's like Now some of these are slightly, but they're worth exploring. Literally, you can try out different techniques with all this, the same approach. Let's just go down with one of these other ones, just a basic art frame, number 42. So 42, you get that. And again, change the margin, you get that. And again, that could be used maybe as a brush stroke. You can use that design. Maybe let's just click OK. I'm happy with that. And you've got that. Looks like a toffee or something sort of wrapped around. And then hold down the Alter Option key or use Layer and Duplicate. But you can then, of course, just duplicate that design. So again, hold down Alter Option and so on. Build up a complex design with that. And of course, you can copy those, duplicate those, and much, much more. And again, exactly the same as for filter, maybe pipe blur, Gaussian blur, apply that, maybe not that strong, something like that, and click OK. But also another thing, whoops, come on, do that. Just delete those, create a new layer again. Let's just go down here, little plus, just click that. What you can also do is you can use selections. So just go here and um, elliptical marquee tool, set a feather. That creates some interesting designs as well. So feather, so just a feather like that with the selection. Then go to filter, then go to render and picture frame. Now, unfortunately, the picture frame you get, you can't see it. This doesn't represent it, so you can't see until, unfortunately, there's no preview feature other than this preview. Be really nice if there was. But you can then see, change that. And as you change that, you've got different designs there. Change the margin again, change that. And again, maybe decide, you know what, let's go for one of the other ones, a dual, and see what it happens. You can see there. So you've got that lovely design. Now, that would be what you design you get if you didn't have the selection. But once you've done that, again, click OK. Again, it takes a few seconds to process. But this time, you see what happens. Because of the feather, you get this very weird, obviously, phases effect. Still, again, on a layer. So select, deselect. Exact same as before. You can now move this around. And this design can be, again, hold down the Alter Option key and duplicate. And you can see, now, because it's got a selection, because it's got had that selection, it doesn't mean that sometimes if you click certain parts, you just won't be able to select it. But you can see you can drag it around like that and create very quickly, very abstract, weird and unusual grid-like background just using that picture frame layer. Well, hope you found this tutorial of interest. Any questions, please let me know. Picture frame, I think, is one of those tools that... You Perhaps you just think, oh, it's a picture frame, but it can be used for infinite kinds of different designs. Bye.